Hey, New Life, Corey Cangelosa here from Hot Springs, and uh, really excited today to talk to you about a meal that Jesus had with his disciple, Matthew. And this happened, it's in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and it happened right after Jesus called Matthew to follow him. Uh, and, and there was a lot of tension around this meal because uh, Matthew was a tax collector, and so during this meal there were other tax collectors and sinners there. It was a pretty large gathering, apparently, and the Pharisees saw this and they, they weren't happy about it. Uh, they, they even asked the disciples, why is your teacher eating with sinners and tax collectors? And Jesus, uh, the word says that he, he heard this, and he replies by telling them it's not those who are healthy who need a physician, it's, it's the sick. And uh, that's really good news for us because uh, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're the ones in need of a savior, of a physician, the great physician to heal us. Uh, but what's interesting about this meal is that in, in Matthew's gospel, he really kind of glosses over it. When he's talking about the meal that happened at his home after he followed Christ, uh, it's, it's really kind of a, uh, an indiscreet uh, event. However, in, in Luke and in Mark, they talk about how this is a big deal. It's a big reception. There's a lot of people there. Matthew doesn't even say it's at his house. He just says during a meal at the house. Uh, and so there's this level of humility that Matthew has about this meal that he shared with Jesus to which he invited all of his friends. And, and I just want to dig into why that was. Why, why did he not think it was a big deal for him to have this meal? Why didn't he brag about it? Why didn't he make a big deal about the fact that, uh, man, he was following Christ now and he was, he was doing this really incredible deed for him and inviting all these lost people over to meet him, uh, to meet Christ and, and hopefully potentially follow him. And instead, he, he just kind of wrote about it in a very uh, humble matter. And, and I want to take you to a passage in Luke 17, because I think this is what Matthew understood when he began to follow Christ. Uh, Luke 17, Jesus is teaching his disciples um, about forgiveness. And if, if you've been alive longer than a day, you, you know that forgiveness is hard. Uh, it's real easy to get hurt, and it's easy to hold on to those hurts. Uh, and it can be really hard sometimes to forgive. And so he's challenging his disciples uh, to forgive someone who um, sins and, and hurts them. And they respond uh, this way in, in Luke 17, 5. They, they said to the Lord, increase our faith. In other words, we need help to do this. This is tough. And so the Lord replied in verse 6, if you had faith like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed in a garden, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. In other words, all you need is a little bit of faith to do great things, is what he's telling them. So just start with whatever faith you've got. Uh, let that faith be, be activated. Act on that faith. Pray in, in faith, even if it's just a little bit, because we serve a big God. And that little bit of faith, um, God can do a lot with that. And, and so we trust him, even with the amount of faith that we have. But then he goes on to explain how do we walk in faith? The very next verse, he, he gives this parable. And it's a really challenging parable that I want to share with you today. And he says this, Which of you, having a slave plowing or tending sheep, will say to him, when he, can, when he has come in from the field, come immediately and sit down to eat? But will he not say to him, Prepare something for me to eat, and properly clothe yourself, and serve me while I eat and drink? And afterward, you may eat and drink. So in other words, he's saying, look, you've got somebody who works for you. Uh, when he's done working, uh, you don't begin to serve him, right? No, he, he, he's, he's working for you, right? So when he's done one job, um, he, he goes on to his next job. And so verse 9, he says, He does not thank the slave because he did the things which were commanded, does he? And so it's a, it's a, a hypothet or, or, um, rhetorical question. He's saying, look, you're not going to thank that uh, worker of yours for doing his job right? He, that's his responsibility. He does it. You, you don't celebrate the fact that, wow, you did what you were supposed to do. Okay. This, this is why I don't like watching professional sports anymore. Okay. Um, I see guys make, let's just talk about football. I'm going to get on my soapbox for a minute. Some guy will make a first down and then he stands up and he does this whole dance about how he made a first down and he points and he gets all excited. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm pretty sure your job, you get paid millions of dollars to catch the football and make first downs. 
So when it happens, you shouldn't celebrate and pat yourself on the back like you did some, no, you're just doing your job and you get paid handsomely to make first downs. So go back to the huddle and get, get ready for the next play. All right, I'm sorry, I'm off my soapbox. Let's get back to the word of God. Verse 10, so you too, when you do all the things which you are commanded to do, say, we are unworthy slaves. We have done only that which we ought to have done. So, so I want you to hear the attitude of humility Jesus is challenging us with. He's saying, look, as believers, when, you, when we begin to follow Christ, we have uh, n- not just the, the opportunity, but the responsibility to serve him. And, and God calls us to follow him. Christ said, take up your cross, follow me. And, and by, by following him, we're denying ourselves and, and, and we are um, making, uh, we're stepping into his footsteps, right? To serve him and all that we do. And so what Jesus is saying, and what I think we see in the life of Matthew at this dinner, where he didn't boast on the fact that, hey, I threw this big party. No, he was just doing what he knew he was supposed to do. He said, man, I've been blessed with a big house or resources, or whatever it is that, that he was blessed with, whatever you're blessed with. And you recognize that, hey, once I begin to follow Christ, these things that I have, they're not for me. These are things that God's given me to use for his kingdom, for his glory. And so when I do those things, I don't pat myself on the back because the truth is that's my responsibility is to use everything I have, everything that I've been given by God. And and what he would say is that I've been entrusted with by him as a steward. My responsibility is to steward those things for his glory. And when I've done the thing that I've been called to do, that God's given me the opportunity to do, then my response should be, well, I'm just doing what God's called me to do. And, And you know what? If, if that went great, awesome. By the grace of God, it went great. You know, if, if I'm able to be successful doing this thing or the other, ultimately it's because God gave me the ability uh, to work and be successful or, or to do a certain thing or, uh, or help a certain person. But, but understanding like Matthew, hey, this is what I've been called to do. I'm, I'm just a, a servant who is unworthy, Jesus said. Uh, I'm just doing what, what I've been called to do and I'm honored to do it. So I hope that as believers, man, we walk in that humility that we see in Matthew when he throws this banquet for Jesus. He's saying, hey, it's just at the house we had a banquet. He doesn't mention his own name. He doesn't try to give himself props. He's just doing what he knows he's called to do. And as believers, when we recognize the sacrifice and, and the grace we've been shown by Christ, man, we should be excited uh, to give our lives in return, in response, for the life that we've been given through Christ, for what he's done for us. And uh, I pray that blesses you today. We love you guys. Have a great day.